ruler was called Boreas. He governed from a palace built with ice from a magic lake. King Boreas turned his realm into a winter playground for all to enjoy. But another king had his own idea of fun. Volcanus, the god of fire, vowed to dethrone Boreas and bring back the warmth of the sun. Volcanus and his crew finally won over Boreas, smashing his palace to bits. But every year, King Boreas comes back, bringing with him his winter paradise. Tonight, a paradise lost is found in St. Paul. Welcome to A Frozen Fable, The Lighting of the Palace. This Carrie Levin News Special is brought to you in part by Visual Motivation and Rainbow In-Store TV, your in-store television source. By Pizza Hut. And by Chase Manhattan Credit Cards. Chase Manhattan, profit from the experience. This is where the plot of our magical story takes us tonight, Harriet Island. This is home for the 1992 Winter Carnival Ice Palace, the center of power for King Boreas and the forces of winter. Thousands of people are here to watch the palace come alive during this grand opening gala. Good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Major. And I'm Diana Pierce. Welcome to the Carol Evan Ice Desk. It's uh, slightly melting a little bit it's on us. It's the slightly. <laughs> That's right. And it's our presentation of A Frozen Fable, The Lighting of the Palace. Over the next hour, we'll take you through a tale that's full of uh, suspense, intrigue, and uh, a lot of good old-fashioned hard work as well. Like any book, ours has a table of contents, a sample of things to come. We'll take you to the unearthly world to see the origins of the palace. You'll also witness the mammoth effort to bring the dream of the world's largest ice palace to reality. And the wizards of Wattage work their magic to turn raw kilowatts into a super, spectac uh, super spectacle for all the world to see. We'll also take you into the sea of humanity that's beginning to gather here in front of the palace, actually right behind us as well. Carol Evans, Asha Blake is in the crowd right now. She's out there somewhere. Asha, oh. what's your estimate of the crowd size? Well, Paul, it is a sea of humanity out here. I've talked to a couple of the people. It's not quite 200,000 yet. They say about 10 to 15,000. It's about five layers deep, and they've here, been here for a long time. Is it warm enough, guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's warm enough, but we'll be here for the next hour talking these folks back to you all right yeah I'd say that's probably a fairly good crowd estimate it continues <laughs> to grow buses continue to come here Melissa Young is out there as well Melissa you're in uh, look at that a rather warm environment <laughs> a corporate hospitality tent that's right Paul we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the changes that are going on in this year's carnival like these heated corporate hospitality tents I'll talk about what made all of this possible namely the Super Bowl that'll be on a little bit later in the show all right Mel thank you very much well of course the uh, culmination this evening will be the lighting of the palace which is uh, just over our shoulder here i really don't think you can see it but when it goes up uh, in lights i think it's going to be quite spectacular it really we is guarantee you will see it organizers structure. organizers promise it will be spectacular like nothing else ever seen before now let's take a look at our palace lighting countdown clock we're about 42 minutes or so away from that magic moment you've got the best seat in town for seeing the lighting right here especially from this particular view from about 60 feet up in the air, provided by Herculeptus Maple Plain. One of our bravest photographers, Randy Clouk, is manning this position, and he'll have one of the most spectacular views of the Ice Palace once the lights are turned on. I don't know which is going to be more impressive, our clock or the palace itself. <laughs> well, all right. I think the palace, the palace, the palace yeah. I think you're right. Well, in a moment, <laughs> we're going to start our fable with Chapter 1, The Dream Builders. It's a tale of palaces from long ago filled with plot twists you've probably never heard before. We'll be right back. Now try the new six cheese pizza for $7.99 and get a second for just four bucks more. And don't forget to add your favorite toppings. Check your local yellow pages for the Pizza Hut delivery.
Set up a portable workshop with the Black & Decker Workmate 300, just $79.99. And take two-speed power anywhere. This Master Mechanic Professional 3 8 inch cordless drill driver is only $99.99. Then clean up with this Master Mechanic 6-gallon wet-drive vacuum, just $45.99, at your local True Value, the neighborhood hardware store with national chain store buying power. Welcome back to A Frozen Fable. The dream builders are the men and women who've constructed palaces for the last 106 years. You know, having a, a winter carnival with an ice palace as its focal point, it actually started with a wisecrack from a New York reporter. In 1885, apparently the correspondent wrote and his readers read that St. Paul in the wintertime was actually uninhabitable for human beings. That's right, and that's not the impression St. Paul's railroad and steamship tycoons wanted spread across the country. So, those business leaders created the carnival and the legend. They looked to Montreal for ideas. That city had a carnival and an ice palace. But it was a natural disaster that brought those traditions here. The Montreal Winter Carnival had been in existence since 1883 and a smallpox epidemic at that time wiped out their carnival for 1886. So we just imported the plans, the architects, the winter activities, all of the different events, and just transported them right to St. Paul and just produced the whole thing right here. And it's been here ever since. More than 40 palaces would be built through the years. The 1887 palace reached 14 stories, the tallest building in town back then. A year later, local fish dealers served oysters on the half shell inside that palace. Let's put our heads together. Is it love or is it weather? In 1937, singer Rudy Valley crooned inside the palace through sub zero temperatures. But just the opposite happened some years. The palaces of 1889 and 1890 never made it past these sketches. It was just too warm for the ice. The 1942 Carnival Pep Squad posed in front of a half-finished palace that began melting away during construction. The Vulcans tore it down before it was finished. And the 1986 palace was also a meltdown victim. This is ice that was deteriorated about two or three weeks ago during a real hot spell. Crews used tarps to shield the ice from the hot sun, packed the palace with dry ice, and sprayed it with CO2 in an effort to keep the walls of the palace from crumbling. Plans were scaled back to make up for the lost time. And the palaces have had their share of quirks. That 1986 version had a fish frozen inside one of the ice blocks. It was deja vu from 100 years earlier. I think my favorite story is in 1886, teams of New York scientists came to the ice palaces to, uh, there were several frozen fish inside the ice blocks, and they unthawed them very carefully to see if they'd come back to life. So you might say that the ice palace served as the first test of cryogenics. And that fish that you saw from 1986 is back. <laughs> Someone saved that fish from destruction, kept it in a freezer, and put it back into this year's fortress. There's also a walleye chasing a can of Pepsi. It's frozen in a block just to the left of the grand entrance to the palace if you happen to come over and want to see it. Well, that brings up a bit of a controversy over to what to call these dream buildings. You know, and, and the debate has gone mm -hmm. back and forth. Is it a palace or is it a castle? Well, this year's version is officially called the Pepsi Ice Palace because of the company's sponsorship. And historian Bob Olson says the original carnival charter calls for the creation of an ice palace. Now, in fables and fairy tales, palaces just appear. In the real world, though, it takes a lot of planning and hard work. For the 1992 Ice Palace, it all starts in the clearest lake in the entire state of Minnesota. It's called Green Lake, located near Spicer, Minnesota. But what looks like just any lake on its surface is a mystical place below the waterline. Here's Carol Evans' John Stone. There used to be a sign not, uh, on the outskirts down here. The world's clearest lake. It's named Green Lake, but its water is clear. Crystal clear and cold. The particulate content is so low, it's like looking through a piece of glass. Green Lake ice. 
in a land of frozen lakes, this one out as the best for an ice palace. So clear the sun sprays through, so cold it stays intact until the harvesters enter the picture. They cut it with the big circle saws out there. They score it like glass. And then they float it into the channel and break off each individual piece like this then. Too small. A few won't size up, but 20,000 will. So many that the longest harvest in Spicer this year has been ice. The first 88 blocks of it are loaded carefully and shipped slowly to St. Paul. December 12th. One from that load, the Winter Palace cornerstone, is laid. There we go! But the task ahead is awesome. Everybody says, oh, it'll never get done in time, or, you know, it won't be as high as they say, but we always get it done. The Ice Palace is drawn up to be the largest ice structure ever, summed up by workers as... The mother of all ice palaces. But construction manager Tom Keller makes it sound simple. They have them on pallets. They unload them into the dunk tank to wash the salt and the road dirt from them. That lets them float into the conveyor. The conveyor spanks them from behind, sends them up the ramp through the milling machine. In our shavers consistently make them 17 and a quarter or greater. They go down into place. The riggers hook the ice block. They get hoisted up to the point where they get dropped. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And the uh, bricklayers slide them into the right position. Then you move on to the next ice block. It's a massive project with detailed craftsmanship. Angles are cut, blocks are measured. And to make it all stick together, grooves are etched in some blocks. Others are melted just a bit so they'll bond together when they refreeze. It's like stacking Lego blocks and gluing them together with Mother Nature. Lego blocks on a grand scale. Each new level brings out higher scaffolding and higher intensity. Those gaps to be filled seem smaller from up high. Here we go, there we go, down, down, we're in. As the palace grows, the last thing on the workers' minds is whether it will crumble. When the ice blocks come together, they're individual pieces. With a little bit of meltdown and then refreezing, it makes the ice castle actually stronger, a monolithic type structure. To that end. The weather's helping, it's perfect. But as quickly as the palace changes, so does the weather. And each extreme causes problems, bitter cold. I'm ready to go back to Arizona. <laughs> Wind and rain. Well, it makes things slippery uh, for climbing and for uh, laying block. And the most threatening of all, prolonged warmth. And it's January 11th, 45 degrees at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's raining. Melting, actually. That's of concern to me. It creates some cavities in the ice, uh, shrinks the ice a little bit. The pleasure of going gloveless, overshadowed by concern for the palace. If this kept up for about three or four days, our project would be in jeopardy. The workers kept up their pace, the only constant at this site. When one shift ended, a second began, carrying construction through 20 hours a day with the same quality commitment as the crew before. This group was not about to miss the deadline. You got her, take her up. And neither was this. Together, building 12 towers, from one side to the other, the length of a football field. By comparison, some of the finishing touches, like water for the ice rink, seem simple. But the center tower was a job, a big one. Assembled earlier and composed of five sections, 
The bottom part alone weighed 22 tons. To pick this one up, it will pick any of them up, don't you think? Lifted in a sky as clear as the ice. Coming down easy. Two feet, hold that, hold that. It was finally set down in nightfall. The two top pieces, the crowning touches, were also the riskiest. Workers waited for daylight the next day to place them. Crowds below waited to see them placed. We can hold it from the outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're under on this side. To the right. Yeah, he'll make it. He did. Six weeks of work was one section away. Looks nice. It'll look even better when we get the last piece up there. The last piece, tethered along by a few workers. The 15th and final story. We're getting close to look at you. <laughs> a victory wave from a worker. I don't know, I'm proud of what I did out here. This looks good. <laughs> Applause from the onlookers. And the highest honor of all for the people who conceived a dream and put it on Harriet Island. There we are. Old glory. 166 feet above St. Paul. John Stone at the palace. Unfortunately, what goes up must come down. Mm -hmm. A demolition expert is in town this week, and he's been uh, checking out the palace to try and figure out how much dynamite it would take to blow it up and bring it down. Dynamite. There's also a chance that a film company may buy the rights to destroy the palace and film the event, maybe in Terminator 3 or Blowing 4 or 5. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, this is a real tribute, in fact, to the, uh, the men and women who worked on the Ice Palace because not one worker was injured during the whole construction process. Carol Evans' Kathy Vara says every man and woman who built the palace put their skill and heart into their work. Mike Dogbelt makes this climb every day. It's a long way up, but what a view. You can see the, the entirety of the ice castle. It's certainly a spectacular sight and uh, basically an honor. Mike's great-grandfather cut ice for a living, so he says it's a little bit like seeing into his family's past. For approximately a dollar a day, he uh, cut ice off a green lake. And it's kind of unique that years later, now I'm having something to do with it, and it's for the castle. It's the first time he's ever worked with ice. It's so pretty, the different textures and fibers and uh, shades of ice and uh, shading and colors are unique. I like it. Carpenter Linda Davis is learning to work with the new material, too. I'm used to working with wood rather than ice, so it's a lot different. And she feels like she's making her own mark on the palace. I think it's really a privilege to be out here and to be able to be part of this historical event, being that I'm making history in my own right by being the only black woman that has worked on the ice castle. Linda says there's a special bond between the workers here. They know it's an opportunity to see one side of the palace most people will never see, the inside. Step inside and you find narrow hallways and scaffolding, just enough room for the workers to do their jobs. And their job isn't easy. Okay. Electricians like Greg Ewald hook up hundreds of strobe lights. And Greg feels like he's right, carrying we'll on family tradition we'll just working on the tape. palace. Greg says his father never missed a winter carnival, and he has the button collection to prove it. You know, I inherited his collection, and I'm trying to keep it going. I have uh, all the winter carnival buttons dating back to 1900, so we got to go back up there and move them. Greg's work requires some pretty fancy footwork, maneuvering his way around with skill that would make the most daring circus performer yeah, envious. Yeah. All right, we're good there. Over. Okay. Climb around on these scaffolds here. You're almost part of the ice castle. You know, put a lot of your work into it. It's fun. I enjoy it. I'd be here for nothing if, it, if there was no pay. And for Greg, perhaps the greatest reward is knowing his a, dad would be proud he is carrying on the winter carnival tradition. Kathy Vara at the palace. It it's amazing how difficult that work is. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, really incredible. You incredible. know, it's really getting crowded down here. The approach ways to the ice palace is. Uh, packed and yes. packed on each side here as well and more buses are coming in over in this direction from us uh, just gorging more passengers all the time yeah, that's right Carol loves asher blake is in the middle of this crowd someplace <laughs> with some friends that she's met well things are really starting to move in here the parade just moved in a couple of minutes ago and i've had a chance to talk to some of the people that are out here they're from spicer minnesota of course found some people from savage found some people from coon rapids and then i stumbled upon this nice young gentleman right here and marv you've been to how many winter carnivals well over 20. 
Check I have, the I have, I have 21 buttons on here. And I counted earlier, too. So is this is this the uh, the be all end all or what, Marv? Well, this is great. This is the this is one of the best I've ever seen. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot. One more person I want us to talk to if we can get a chance. There's a woman here from Florida. If you can believe that. Did your friends think you were crazy? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they thought I was crazy. I'm freezing here. But what do you think of the ice palace? Oh, it's beautiful. I can't wait for them to light it up. Does it, does it look like 10 million pounds of ice or more? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it gets better from here. Well, that's what everybody's thinking down here, and we'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, Asha. Thank you, Asha. Well, the moment that everybody is waiting for is inching ever closer. The palace lighting countdown clock says that we're about, I guess, about 42 minutes away from what's going on. And right down there in the lower right-hand portion of your screen, those are the torches that have been brought in that are sort of lining both sides of the approachway there, which leads up to the podium where the official lighting ceremonies will take place tonight. Now, before that happens, we've got a whole lot more to show you, including what pressure the Super Bowl spotlight puts on this community festival. But first, here's a frozen fact about the ice palace. Watchers presents the new Ultimate 200s. 11 totally indulgent, outrageous entrees. Each just 200 calories or less from Weight Watchers. Total indulgence, zero guilt, yeah! Right now, you'll find big savings for your workshop at Menards. Tackle all of your do-it-yourself projects and hobbies with Ryobi Power Tools. Like this 3 8 inch cordless drill, now just $49.99. And these handy Plano utility boxes are the perfect storage solutions to help you keep organized. This 20 inch Plano toolbox is now just $6.99. Stock up your workshop and save at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Hi, Jim here to let you know that we're not going to be using any little kittens or babies or people dressed up like Abe Lincoln to try to sell you a car you may not want in the first place. Instead, we'll show you this uh, Subaru Legacy here. It's got uh, AC, all-wheel drive, uh, glass windows, AM, FM tape deck. It costs a little more than a bike, but a lot less than a Honda Accord that doesn't even offer all-wheel drive. You think these cufflinks are too big? See your Twin Cities Subaru dealer. Sir? What if now at Perkins you could have one of three huge omelets for only $3.99? I'd say that sounds pretty good. And what if you could have that omelet plus these crispy hash browns still for only $3.99? Hey, you guys are pretty generous. And what if you could have the omelet, the hash browns, and these gorgeous pancakes still for $3.99? I'd say you guys are void of any business acumen whatsoever. Huh? You're going to go belly up. But, sir, it's only for a limited time. you got a limited brain? How are you going to send your kids to college? Welcome back, everybody. You know, our Frozen Fable is not only a story being enjoyed by uh, Minnesota and western Wisconsin, it's also getting a lot of attention in the rest of the world. And that's because all of the writers are here for the Super Bowl. That's right. The Winter Carnival and the Ice Palace in particular is getting a lot of attention because of Super Bowl 26. Mm -hmm. Carol Evans, Melissa Young is in one of the six corporate tents that have been set up here on Harriet Island. You know, if you have a business or something like that and you want to really impress some out-of-town folks, you schmooze in one of these deals right now. And lots of eaters. I know you're just jealous, right, Paul, because I'm in here and you're out there. <laughs> no, indeed, these are to impress a lot of people. And, uh, and and the most impressive thing, I think, is especially for out-of-towners, that they'll have a nice, warm place to come to. You guys enjoying the nice warmth here, Tim? Yeah. yeah okay, so even the locals, he's from Egan, even the locals will enjoy it. As you can see, this is the Pepsi tent. Now, we should tell you, and they've got food there and tables and, and monitors so they can watch the show. And it's really a pretty nice setup. Now, this is one of the new attractions at this year's Winter Carnival. Another, of course, is the Ice Palace. And that has created something of a chicken and egg debate. Some people are saying, which came first? Did the Super Bowl make the Ice Palace possible? Or is the Ice Palace bring, responsible for bringing the Super Bowl here? Well, either way you look at it, you can't deny the impact of the big game. Minnesota. Super Bowl 26. Fire and ice. The Super Bowl task force borrowed a Winter Carnival theme to sell the NFL owners on Minnesota, and they promised them fun in St. Paul. 
And in 1992, we're going to do it up especially right. We'll build for you the biggest ice castle that any of you have ever seen. It's easy to make a promise. It's a lot harder to keep it. While volunteer labor built the last ice castle, this year's Super Bowl timetables required changes. We knew that uh, the window to showcase this was going to be more limited with the Super Bowl uh, happening on the first Sunday night. So we, I think, decided early on that we were going to have to obtain sponsorship for this and uh, pay for more of the things than we did in 1986. Like paying most of the people who make it happen. I'm building a palace. <laughs> the castle became a palace thanks to the Pepsi people, and the hometown carnival has turned into a world-class event. Well, this year the Winter Carnival itself has a much higher profile because of the Super Bowl. As a result, it seemed fitting to us that our involvement would be at a much higher level as well. A world-class event doesn't come cheap. The palace and nearby events will cost a million dollars. Pepsi's picking up the biggest chunk. Other supporting sponsors pay the rest. Big money sponsors mean big money access. These hospitality tents will give sponsors a place to wine and dine corporate honchos right in front of the icy edifice. It's a system Minnesotans have seen before. During the U.S. Open, corporate tents hosted dozens of private parties. The Winter Carnival tents will be similar, but the public won't be left out. Most of the palace tents will be open to everyone. St. Paul Winter Carnival. Tying this year's event to the Super Bowl has brought super pressure to create a super carnival. Just ask the staff. And he needs to fax over our certificate of insurance. I thought we were doing like three or four big pieces. He can't do three inch size. Well, I think we should go down to a two and a half. We'll need a permit from him for heat, for the generator. <sighs> we're really doing three festivals in terms of the level of sponsorship, the level of expenditure, and the level of effort. Despite the added hype, most of the carnival will be the same. Klondike Kate will still be there, as will the ice slide. These scenes will be shown to an international audience of nearly a billion people. And for at least one weekend, visitors will see a difference. There'll be a lot of corporate tour groups in town, um, a lot of international visitors. So I think they will sense that difference. These, these aren't going to be just Minnesota folks this year. There's going to be a lot of people here. Luckily, right now, most of those people are outside, and we've got lots of space here inside the Pepsi tent. There is another part of this tent, I should tell you, and that part is open to the public. They have a Pepsi museum, and as I said, most of the tents out here do have an area so that the public can get in from the cold. Indeed, this, is, uh, this has been a good day. You guys having fun? Yeah. yeah. Okay, they're having fun, and we'll have a little bit more later on in the show. <laughs> they're inside guys, warm. Fun. Inside warm, watching TV. That's right. <laughs> They've got a great scene. You know, we mentioned earlier that the Super Bowl has brought media from around the world to uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul. And some of those organizations are set up right next door to us. Asher Blake has more on that. That's right. We've got a pretty good seat out here, too. It's not that warm, and we don't have a TV, but it's not that bad. I've got some friends out here. This is Shinichi from Japan, and this is Alex from New York, who's here to help Shinichi. And we're going to talk about the Ice Palace right now. Shinichi, what do you think of what's going on here and of the Ice Palace? あの、アイスパラズ今行ってる前は印象はどうですかね。思ってたより uh, he, uh, he said it was much bigger, you know, when what he saw. He was just, you know, anxious to see the lights, the fire. Okay, well, he'll see that in about the, the fire light. 20 minutes. One last thing. Okay, come on, show me. We talked about this earlier. What do you have on? He bought these two hours ago. Yeah. Long underwear. Uh -huh. Are you warm now? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's staying warm. I'll give him one of my hand warmers, too. We'll be fine. Back to you. All right, Asha. Thank you very much. You know, the crowd, as we said, is quite large now, and uh, just about everybody here, it seems, has either a video cam or Absolutely. a camera. That's because they're waiting for the big official They started lights early. Yeah. When we arrived, I ran into a gentleman from Plymouth, Minnesota. He was recording it for his family, and he brought friends up from southern Minnesota. So That's great. Making sure that he had a good shot ahead of time. Now, let's take another look at the Palace Lighting Countdown Clock. We're only about 15 minutes away from making history the biggest ice palace ever. But before that happens, you'll see what some people will do to get a look at the palace. Here's another frozen fact in the meantime.
whatever month you choose. We're flexible. And that makes for a better experience with us all year round. Chase. Profit from the experience. Hungry? Try one of the all-new Ultimates from Emmett's for only $2.99. Three farm-fresh eggs. That's right. Three. With your choice of hickory-smoked ham or hardwood-cured bacon and country sausage, plus buttermilk pancakes or French toast. The all-new Ultimates from Embers, just $2.99. There's only one place for food this good. Embers. Only Embers. For a limited time, the Dodge Sales Drive drives on. Don't drive. to your Dodge dealer now and still own Shadow America for only $69.84 thanks to a thousand cash back. Still 500 cash back on Caravan and you can get air at no extra charge. Still up to 2,000 cash back on select Dodge trucks and package savings up to $26.83. Hurry, time is running out. If you're just tuning in, we are in the middle of a frozen fable. In less than 15 minutes, the Winter Carnival Ice Palace will be brought to life with a spectacular lighting and fireworks show, and you'll see it live right here on CARE 11 TV. Right now, we're going to jump back out to the crowd with Asha Blake. She's out there somewhere. Asha? Yep, Paul, the crowd is getting larger and larger, and we managed to sneak down a little bit closer. It's not easy at all to do. We kind of pushed our way through. They're doing the bouncing girl right over there. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, maybe you can. Lane can get a shot. Well, she's down right now, <laughs> but believe me, she is bouncing. Um, I got to tell you, it has not been easy for people to get a look at this ice palace. We spent the day, I was with photographer Regina McCombs, and we were just traveling around trying to get a shot. It wasn't easy. People were trying to sneak up to the fence. People were trying to stand on the bridge and take a look. They were pretty much trying to do anything they possibly could because it's such a fantastic ice palace. But you know, some people managed to find a way to sneak a peek. It was anything but easy to sneak a peek at the Ice Palace in the making. Most days, onlookers were kept off the site for their own good. Well, it's blocked up wherever you want to go through. And palace security, in attempts to keep traffic moving, shooed fans off the nearest street viewing spot. But that didn't stop creative souls from tossing caution to the chilly wind and trying. You get some people saying they're from Spicer, Minnesota. They want to see where their lake ice is going up at. Oh, those onlookers, they were a crafty lot. We saw different techniques of avoiding security and snapping away at history. There was the I'm from Iowa approach. The cops were a little feisty, yeah, but yeah, it was worth my life. Others said, oh, but I've brought out-of-town guests from Oregon, and we've got to get close. It's magnificent. It's huge. It's blue, though. What color did you expect it to be? White. But the best excuse by far to get close to this chunk of ice was this one. One guy today says he's worth the Burt Reynolds crew, which ain't true. So where the heck were the best places to view this ice palace? Well, we investigated and found two of our own. I think I'll have the salmon. And ever in the pursuit of truth and journalism, I sacrificed my bag lunch and joined the North St. Paul Retired Teachers Monthly Luncheon. Hotel management plunked a telescope in Le Carousel Restaurant on the 22nd floor. And voila! a safe and warm place to view the Ice Palace. And if it works out, I'll send it to the instructor that I had that showed me how to use my camera. <laughs> and the other best view? Well, I wasn't about to check it out in person for you. Yes, the Ramsey County Jail and Sheriff's Office has another great view. Every day we come to work and see progress being made on it and, uh, and uh, just been real enjoyable to watch it go up. And you don't have to fight with security to see it either. <laughs> no, we don't. Well, we had to fight with security a little bit just to get up here. We finally made it up to the Ice Palace. Governor Carlson is speaking right now. And I want to talk to this lady. How did you manage to make it up here so quickly? Oh, I followed my brother-in-law. He's with the trade. Local 49. Oh, connections, huh? Yeah, you bet. Connections. Okay. That's the only way to do it. Back to you. All right, Asha. Thank you very much. You know, some of the palace builders adopted a line from the movie Field of Dreams to describe the crowds expected to come over here and see the Ice Palace. And that, of course, is uh, if you build it, they will come. Two and a half million people are expected to make it down here to Harry Island for a visit, but the only way you can get here is by shuttle bus. Now, you can ride and park from uh, Rice Park 
and several lots on Lafayette from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Signs on I-94 can point the way to those pickup places if you're unfamiliar with the area. The buses will leave every 15 minutes, and the ride is free with a winter carnival button. Well, the big moment is getting closer. We're only eight minutes away from the grand lighting ceremony, so uh, in this commercial break, get the children together and practice ooh, ah, ooh. And you know what? In a moment, you'll see the high technology being used to get the palace to glow. But first, another frozen fast pack. the new six cheese pizza for $7.99 and get a second for just four bucks more. And don't forget to add your favorite toppings. Check your local yellow pages for the Pizza Hut delivery unit nearest you. You can do it with true value. Upgrade your workshop and your results with all this. The Master Mechanic 19-piece socketed wrench set, just $29.99. And their professional 25-foot power tape, only $8.88, is ergonomically designed. Get more torque for easy turning. The Master Mechanic four-piece power torque screwdriver set is just $7.88 at your local True Value, the neighborhood hardware store with national chain store buying power. On January 12th, a farmer, as though drawn by an irresistible force, drove his truck off the road through a field and into a Pepsi billboard, changing the course of cola history forever. To find out how, watch the big game on January 26th. Hi, I'm Jim, this is a car, and this is Subaru Lack of Pretense Days. What we'd like to do is sell you a good car at a reasonable price. This Loyal wagon has uh, all-wheel drive, AC, a nice AM FM stereo, steering wheel, all for about $1,000 less than one of its closest competitors. Toyota Corolla. I didn't want to say it, but then I, see, now I feel bad. See your Twin City Subaru dealer. Welcome back, everybody, to Harriet Island. Uh, you're looking at the uh, Ice Palace there. You can see it in the right-hand side of your screen. Still dark, but very shortly, the lights are going to come on. And you know, the wizards of wattage will not use a wand to wield their magic. Really? <laughs> That's right. They use electricity pumping through about $1.2 million worth of light equipment brought in for the carnival. You know, over the last few days, the experts have used all of their powers to uh, test their uh, electricity around here. Mm -hmm. And after all, it's the first time anyone has tried to light an ice palace with uh, what are really, I guess, considered laser-like lights. It really should be spectacular. Care 11 photographer Lane Mickelson uh, spent well, most of last week here, right up until yesterday, uh, checking things out, keeping his camera rolling, making sure he had videotape of it when the beams finally started coming together. White, red, yellow, cycling, cycling. cycling. This type of lighting has never been done in ice. It's always been in rock concerts on those big fancy scaffolds. And all they do is just lower the scaffold, hook them on and run them up and walk away. But we have to figure out everything on how to do it. Coming up. This is 112 feet up in the air. It feels secure to me. It's not, it's not moving in the wind. Whoa. Where'd that come from? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, dropping down from between the columns. Almost the direct hit. <laughs> Excluding the control cables. I, we got about three and a half miles. Here's the mirror, but check this out. It's got a rotating motor in the back here. Oh, for crazy. And that go. sucker can go this way, that way, whatever. They... 12 points to About 4,000 watts. Uh oh. Now the data flashes are coming on. They go through a self-test. Whoa, now we're having fun. Let me out of here. The magic of electricity, isn't it? Get in, get in. 
Oh, that's third level. Would you believe that's only 10% of its power? Go outside, look at the corners to see what it looks like. Okay, give me a few minutes. That's one fixture right now, and there's 402 in the whole castle now. These are very bright, and there are going to be a total of 76 of these. You will not believe how bright it's going to be. They're going to have to tell the St. Paul Airport that <laughs> this is not the landing field. You might have Paul Majors tell the people to... It wouldn't be a bad idea to have your sunglasses in your shirt pocket. And, Even at night? At, at night. It's going to be fun. Well, the Wizards of Wattage are about to begin their prestidigitation. Whoa, die! You like that? <laughs> Whoa, give me five. <laughs> All right. Well, one last look at the uh, palace lighting countdown clock shows that we're only two minutes away from the big ceremony. We'll bring it to you live as soon as this commercial break is over. We have one last frozen fact for you, however. Discover Menard Cube selects the paneling and redecorate for less. Choose from more than 80 panels in stock in many decorator patterns. Abitibi quarter-inch Ridgewood paneling is now just $4.99 a sheet. And remember Menards for light bulbs. You'll find bulbs for almost every lighting need. Sylvania two-pack soft white bulbs are just 39 cents after mail-in rebate. Save on brand name quality every day at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Watchers presents the new Ultimate 200s. 11 totally indulgent, outrageous entrees. Each just 200 calories or less from Weight Watchers. Total indulgence, zero guilt, yeah! Sir, what if now at Perkins you could have one of three huge omelets for only $3.99? I'd say that sounds pretty good. And what if you could have that omelet plus these crispy hash browns still for only $3.99? Hey, you guys are pretty generous. And what if you could have the omelet, the hash browns, and these gorgeous pancakes still for $3.99? I'd say you guys are void of any business acumen whatsoever. Huh? You're gonna go belly up. But, sir, it's only for a limited time. You got a limited brain? How are you gonna send your kids to college? Hi. Rainbow Foods and Visual Motivation welcome the 100 lucky rainbow winners who will enjoy this fabulous Super Bowl Ice Palace tent gating party. All made possible by simply watching the TV screens located throughout each rainbow store. Special thanks to all the manufacturers who feature their products on in-store TV. See the product specials and customer involvement promotions on Rainbow TV. Can you afford not to? Welcome back, everybody, to our Fort Frozen Fable. The big moment has arrived. The palace is about to be brought to life with lights. That's right. Let's just go to the main stage right now to watch what's happening. The switch is about to be thrown. Dick Steary. In case you didn't hear, that's the chairman. It's wonderful to see all of you here tonight. This is the culmination of about two and a half years of work by up to about 2,500 volunteers here in St. Paul and elsewhere. There are people across the Pacific who tell us that there are lazy Americans, and I don't see any lazy Americans here tonight. There have been times during the past 220 years when nations have doubted the resourcefulness and the tenacity and the determination of the American people and those people have repeatedly and consistently been proven wrong. Do not be surprised if these Americans, these Minnesotans, these St. Paulites have the ability and the determination to build a 166-foot high ice palace 220 feet wide. We are most pleased to have all of you here tonight. Welcome to the Winter Carnival. Welcome to the Super Bowl. 
This is Minnesota, this is St. Paul, and this is the No Winter Carnival. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dick. When we started out this project, our goal was to build a castle 150 feet high. Through the efforts of the St. Paul Building Trades, we exceeded that goal to 165 feet. It's my pleasure to introduce the Executive Secretary of the St. Paul Building Trades, Mr. Dick Angfang. Thank you very much, John. I'm extremely proud and humbled at the same time to be able to stand here and represent some of the finest construction workers in all of America. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the wonderful sponsors. Without them, uh, we wouldn't be here today. It takes a lot more than sweat and hard work. It takes a little dull, and we thank you very much. To all of the men and women who have worked 10-hour days, seven days a week for over six weeks, and for that effort received half their normal wage, I think you guys did, and gals did a great job. In doing so, you were away from your homes and your families all day long, some of you all night long. A lot of things had to be set aside at home. All of the people, you didn't have to make that sacrifice, but you did. And all of the people that will come and view this magnificent structure are going to appreciate it. All along, from the very beginning, the construction manager, Tom Keller, understood what he needed to complete this structure on time. He needed good ice, he needed good sponsors, and he needed AFL, CIO, Union Building and Construction Trades workers. Okay. They are the very best. You got it done, it's up, Let's have some fun. Thank you. We were very fortunate in this project that we had a great partner. And that's what it takes to be able to build a palace like this. A company that knew their corporate responsibilities and their participation in the community was important. And we appreciate that and always will. It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Carl Sandberg, Vice President of Pepsi. Thank you, John. Thank you. As impressive as this castle is, so is this crowd out here tonight. There's an estimated 150,000 of you. I think that is absolutely terrific. You know, on behalf of the Pepsi-Cola Company and all the Pepsi-Cola employees here in the state of Minnesota, we are very delighted to have helped make the Pepsi Ice Palace a possibility. You know, for us at Pepsi, it's a way to give back to all of you, the residents of this great state, for making us, give you back something for making us the number one choice in the state. Thank you. I'd also, I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank the St. Paul Building Trades Council for without their fine effort, the Pepsi Ice Palace would not have been a possibility. Thank you. Also, I invite all of you as you attend the St. Paul Winter Carnival and the Pepsi Ice Palace to visit the Pepsi Museum uh, at the Pepsi Tent. And obviously, Minnesota, you've got the right one baby, huh? With Pepsi, yeah! Thank you, Carl. Are we ready to light an ice palace? <laughs> Governor? We're going to need some help on the countdown. Are you all ready to help me? Okay, let's start out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
They had mentioned uh, that as they threw the switch, there was about a 30-second delay for these laser lights to take over, and that's what we're waiting for. The lights inside to crank up. A bit of a disappointment for everybody who didn't hear that message from the podium prior to the switch being thrown. Just off to the left of the ice palace, uh, we do somebody, see... Somebody from the crowd just yelled at me, did you get that on tape? <laughs> yeah. They said Here about 30 comes. seconds. I assume we're at about that point right now. Folks, I'm sure it's coming, but so far this is about as uh, climactic as most Super Bowls. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, the lasers are warming up now. Through the tops, we can see them. to the Wilm Tell Orchard. Now we're listening to the Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> right now and get some reaction from some of the folks out there. Well, Paul, there's a lot of, there's a lot of toe tap and a lot of hand wave, a lot of shaking down here. And I've got Conde K with me. What do you think, Kay? It's beautiful. This is wonderful. I'm going, I'm already having so much fun. This is this, gorgeous. This is what we've been waiting for. Celeste, honey, we got a Super Bowl, a Super Palace, and a Super K demand. All right, Minnesota. Okay, well, I don't know. Does it get any better than that? Everybody just kind of dancing around here. This young gentleman's been here for hours. Yeah. Okay, what do you think? It's awesome. Totally awesome. Totally awesome? What? Totally awesome? Yeah. Okay, let's see if things are as awesome where Melissa is. Now. Well, that's
That's right, Ash. I'm here now. Amy, you said that you weren't here for the 86th Palace, but you've been waiting here a while. What do you think of all this? I think this is beautiful. Yeah. I like this. Is it what you expected it to be? I know there's been a lot. I of never knew what to expect, so it's quite a surprise, and I like it. Yeah. Okay, now we've got some other folks over here. Now, these people have a special perspective. They were mittens in the parade. Now, I know you guys have been working really hard to get here. Come on all over here now. Tell me what, uh, you've been waiting out here all this time. You marched in the parade. What do you think now? It's great. We're just enjoying the lights. Yeah. Now, now who said that they had seen the last palace? I did. You did. What do you, what do you think compared to the last one? It's much better. It's yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah. And how about you folks? Is this what you expected? I had never seen one before, so it's really neat. Looks real good. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, that's it for now. Back to you, Paul and Diane. All right, Mel. Thank you very much. Let's take another look at the palace. Let's turn to that right now. You know, uh, as good as our technicians are and as good as television is, it's still only two-dimensional. And I would encourage everybody at home, really, to come down here to Harriet Island, particularly at night, because I'm telling you, this is truly a fantastic light it show. It really is. <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like this. There just aren't enough adjectives to describe seeing this in person. Mm -hmm. It really pops out at you. The music's marvelous. The lighting's marvelous. The palette itself is a, is a truly amazing structure. A real, a real testament to the ability of the people that got together and put this thing up. That's right. A big salute to all the construction workers and technicians that put this together. The laser shows is incredible. the music <laughs> listening to in the mood and everything else that we've had tonight that's great the crowd is really not moving at all everybody's eyes are absolutely riveted on the ice palace itself everybody's i think really stunned by how fantastic this whole thing has turned out Paris music going on in the background. So we'd like to thank all of you who tuned in to join us for the lighting of the Ice Palace tonight. Why don't, in fact, why don't we cut back to the palace itself? It really is an night. incredible shot. But uh, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, we ran a little long tonight, so we're going to join NBC in progress as we leave you with a final look at the Ice Palace. We encourage you to come down and see it in person. Good night, everybody.